Hey, good morning options traders, and I hope everybody had a fabulous weekend. And this video came about as a request from one of our traders asking about today's options statistics, which is a little hidden tab in the Thinkorswim platform. A lot of good information in there, but a lot of traders either don't know that it exists or if they happen to stumble onto it, they don't know how to read it. So good question. Let's go take a look at it. But before we do, there's one statistic in there that usually throws traders if they're not familiar with it, and that is called the sizzle index, which is something really unique to think or swim. So let's go take a look at the sizzle index first, and then we'll jump into TOS. So the sizzle index, what is it? Well, it simply compares today's volume to the average volume of the previous five trading days. It's going to look at the previous five trading days, add up the volume, divide by five just a straight up simple average. And it's just going to divide those numbers out. It's going to take today's volume divided by this average. So obviously numbers greater than one show an increase while numbers less than one show a decrease. So for instance, let's say that this is a chart showing volumes. Here are the past five trading days. And let's say that today is Monday. We got this big spike here in volume. So what would the sizzle index be on this day? Well, Thinkorswim is just going to look at the previous five trading days, add up all of these volumes, divide them up, and it's going to divide this volume by this average. So for instance, let's say that the last five trading days had an average volume of 1,000. And today, we look at the volume, and it's 2,000. TOS is going to say 2,000 divided by 1,000 is 2. In other words, today's volume is two times bigger than the average over the past five days. So that's what the sizzle index of two means. If today's volume were 15,000, then we take 15 divided by one, we get a sizzle index of 15. And that just means that today's volume is 15 times higher. But now, what if it were less? Let's say that today's volume were 800. We're going to take 800 divided by 1,000. The sizzle index is 0.8. Now don't confuse your decimals. This does not mean today's volume is 80 times bigger it means it's 80% of, okay, it's 0.8, or you could think of it as being 20% below. So that's what a sizzle index that is less than one means. And then what will happen on the next day for Tuesday? Well, TOS just slides the next five business days. That's why it's called a five-day moving average. It just takes this window and keeps moving through time, and then it would use the average over these days for Tuesday. So now that you have a better understanding of what the sizzle index is, let's go over to TOS and take a look at today's option statistics. Okay, so now we're into the TOS platform. I just happen to have Apple up on my chart, so I'm going to use it. So I'm in the trade tab, and this is where we do most of our trading from right here. Here is the options chain down below, and way down here at the bottom, there's our tab, today's options statistics. Left mouse click there, and there it is, lots of good information. So let's start over here on the left, 52 week implied volatility high. What Thinkorswim is doing is it's saying what was the highest implied volatility for Apple options over the last year? At about 63%. Now also when they talk about the implied volatility, I believe that Thinkorswim looks at two strikes in the money, two strikes out of the money plus the at the money. They might do three strikes in and out, but it's some type of an average near at the monies. But basically what they're trying to do is to say what is a good average number to say that these are the implied volatilities for these options. So over the past year, 63%, that's getting up there. This was obviously during coronavirus. 52 week implied volatility low, same thing, but 21% was the low. So this can also give you a, a helpful hint about where is today's implied volatility and how high is that? Well, look down below, implied volatility right now is at about 26.8, almost 27%. And right here it says the current implied volatility percentile is 12%. So the 12th percentile, what does that mean? Think of this like a ladder. 0% is the bottom rung, 100% is the top. You are 12% up that ladder. In other words, 88% of the data lies above this. You can think of it as though 88% of the time the implied volatility was higher. We're only in the 12th percentile. 
So that's saying that this 27% figure down here, if we compare it to this range, is about 12% from the bottom. Next, we have the 52-week historic volatility high. Same idea, but just for the historic volatility, which of course measures the volatility for the stock, not the options. That was at about 58%. And over that same time frame, the low was 17%. So one thing it's showing us that these options typically trade with a premium. When we were at the high for the stock at 58, the options were trading at about 63. When we were at 17% for the stock, options were trading at about 21. And then finally down below, we have the VWAP or the volume weighted average price. And I do have another video in our forum explaining this in detail if you're not familiar with what this is. But essentially, it's the price of the stock weighted by volume. So for this day, it was 130.78, let's call it. And if we come up here to the close, we see it was 130.46. So the closing price, even though that was the current price, it was actually a little bit less than the volume weighted average price. So there's a number of reasons why we might look at that, but it can also give you an idea if the price is, well, at a minimum, above or below average. So this also shows that we were starting to fall going into market close. In the center here, we've got some really good information. Trade analysis. Notice we have calls on the left, puts on the right, and then the total. Total is just summing up the numbers for the calls and the puts. The first row here is the total volume. So we had about 1.8 million contracts traded. This is just for Apple, but it's for all of the calls, not any given expiration month, 1.8 million. For the puts, we had about 897,000 almost. And then the total was about 2.7 million. So you can see we had far more calls, almost twice as many calls traded as puts. Down below that, traded at the bid or lower. 825,000 of this 1.8 million traded at the bid or lower. So that was about 44%. So you might be wondering, how can you execute a trade below the bid? Isn't that a violation of NBBO or National Best Bid Best Offer? Not really. And that's because the NBBO isn't good for all of the contracts that anybody in the world could ever want to trade. There's a certain size limit. So what can happen is that might be a big hedge fund or big institution coming in with a large order that can't fill it at the current bid. So they got filled maybe below the bid. And so that's what happened right here. So a good number of them. This can give you an indication of maybe a lot of big orders coming in. So 44% filled below the bid. Traded at the ask or above. Same idea here, but just for the asking price, percent of total. 37% of all of the calls at the time of the trade traded above the ask. So that's important to understand. It's at the time of the trade, not the closing bid ask or whatever. It's at the time of the trade, what was the bid and the offer? And did that trade fill below the bid or above the offer or somewhere in between? And that's what this is showing you down here. Between the market, 324,000 almost, or about 17% of all of the contracts traded fell between the bid and the ask at the time of the trade. Down below that, we have delta between. This is kind of interesting. You can change these ranges by clicking this cogwheel. You can space these out or reset them right here. I usually just leave the defaults, but it's saying how many traded with a delta between 0 and 20? 31%. How many between 21 and 40 deltas? 27%. One of the ones that I find interesting, look down here, between 80 and 100, these would be your stock replacement calls only 11%. So this is, again, a very hidden gem of a strategy. Not a lot of people trade it, and yet it's virtually the same as stock. So if you're trying to figure out where people are trading, at least for this underlying in terms of their deltas, there they are. Not uncommon. Traders love the out-of-the-money options for the leverage. So most of the time, you will probably see that deltas below 50 in total are going to make up a good portion of the trading. Over here for puts, it's exactly the same information just for the puts, and then for the total is just summing them up. So how many call and put trades do we have with a delta between zero and 20? 33%. And then finally over here on the right, here's our sizzle index. So this is just for the calls and puts. You can see it's lined up right there. 
53%. And what this means is that if we look at the volume for the calls and puts compared to the last five trading days, they're at about 53%. Now, they break it down. The call sizzle index, just looking at the calls, was at about 50% and the puts at about 60%. So again, this is not really surprising. We saw that the closing price was below the VWAP. We know the market was starting to head lower on Friday. Probably got some more put buying than we did for the calls. But those are the numbers right there. Volatility sizzle. We can do the same thing for volatility. This would be the implied volatility. So the implied volatility for today compared to the last five trading days is 1.097 times. Let's call it about 1.1 or about 10% higher. So a pretty good boost in volatility. And we all know that when markets fall, volatility starts to spike. So we're starting to see that here in the volatility sizzle. What about the stock sizzle? We can do it for the stocks. So what we're saying here is that the volume for today's trades compared to the last five trading days is about 35% higher, 1.35 times. So lots of volume compared to the last five trading days. And then last on the list, the put call ratio. Now there is a, another video in our forum talking about the put call ratio in detail. So if you want more information, you can see that. But what it's doing is it's taking the number of puts, the total number of puts, not just for a given expiration, but for all puts traded on Apple. And then it takes all calls traded on Apple and it divides them out. So we're getting a number 0.486, roughly a half. So that's telling us that for every put contract traded, we had roughly two contracts for the calls. One divided by two would be a half. So we could find this number over here. We take the total number of puts divided by the total number of calls. You divide those out and you're going to get 0.486. Keep in mind that the put call ratio is generally viewed as a contrarian indicator. So if we're starting to see a lot more calls being purchased, which we are to push this below one, a lot of times it's a sign of bearishness. So again, you might want to check out that video on the put call ratio. But that's really the basics of this information in today's options statistics. Again, I think it's a little hidden gem in Thinkorswim, and I hope it now gives you a little better understanding of how to read it. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a complete Thinkorswim trading course. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.